What is Nix, anyway? If you run Nix help, it'll tell you that Nix is a tool for reproducible and declarative configuration management. Convinced? Neither am I. Let's try again. What the hell is Nix? Nix is a suite of systems and tools. It's a language and operating system, but maybe most importantly, the largest, most powerful package manager in existence. When I say large, I mean huge. Nix has over 80,000 packages by this point, second only to Arch's AUR. But a word of warning, Nix is also a rabbit hole, a very, very deep rabbit hole. It's extremely hard to get into and figure out if you're just a beginner. And this is what this video is all about. It's about getting into Nix in baby steps, trying to clear the noise and look at the important bits, the basics, the concepts, and most importantly, what's in it for you? How you, by the end of this video, can start enjoying Nix yourself. Let's get into it. Before we start, here's a quick drawing to make sense of everything. As I mentioned earlier, Nix is a few things. It's an OS known as Nixos, a package manager known as Nix packages, and a language known as the Nix DSL. It's important to keep in mind that each of these are not the other and stand on their own. Moreover, they can be used independently. For example, I can start running Nix packages as my macOS package manager of choice without having to run Nixos or use the DSL. If you're a macOS user, Nix is simply better than Homebrew or Macports. The same goes for Linux users. Yep, even you Arch snowflakes. Nix isolates dependencies, making it easy to create reproducible and reliable environments, more so than other package managers. You can roll back changes, perform atomic upgrades to prevent failures, and create immutable environments. This is a key principle of Nix. Environments should be immutable to ensure maximum confidence. Let's install a Nix package. Installing a package can be done with this simple one-liner. This will install ribgrep with any other dependency, making sure it's available to the user immediately. The flags IA stands for install attribute, and attribute here would be nixpackages.ribgrep. Let's take a closer look. Nix installed RG with a pinpointed version, in this case 1410. And this is stored at slash nix slash store hash and kept as a DRV, which is a Nix derivation. A derivation specifies how to produce a particular build output, for example, a package or a binary, from specific inputs such as source code, build scripts, and dependencies. Checking which RG now shows that it's installed by Nix profile and provided by bin slash RG under Nix. I can now happily start ribgrepping, searching for code on my machine. Remember we talked about how big the Nix package registry actually is? Well, there's a bunch of ways to search for downloadable artifacts, the most direct of which is a simple search of the official directory at nixos.org. Netcat, for example, is obviously provided in many versions and flavors. I'll pick one of them and run the same package installation command, but this time for Netcat. Nix makes sure to create a list of dependencies first, also pinpointed with a hash and a version, storing each individually in a local cache store. Once everything is in place, the derivation is built and I'm ready to run Netcat on my machine. If we take a closer look at how Nix stored derivations, we'll see a long list of hashes followed by pinpointed versions of libraries and tools. Let's look at ribgrep, for example, which was installed just earlier. Under bin, we can find the result of the build, the RG binary. Share holds an additional information and compatibility libraries, in this case for bash completion, ZSH, fish, and the CLI man pages. Okay, so, we have enough tools to replace existing package managers, but Nix's killer feature though is this. Sometimes you need a one-off shell with some tooling either to validate a build or run a one-off tool that you don't necessarily want messing your environment. So Nix can do exactly the same without having to actually install something. Check this out. Nix-shell minus p with cause, for example. This is the famous cause provided by a Nix temporary shell that I can still run on my local files, unlike an unmounted Docker container, and I can see it comes from a local bin. Leaving the shell, however, I can see that cause is gone. It's not really gone, of course, it was never there in the first place. Let's push Nix even further and try to use it as a declarative package management system. By that, I mean providing it with a list of packages for a reproducible environment with the tooling I like. We can declare a suite of packages in a file, let's call it env.nix, and have the system take care of making it happen. 
No looping through installation scripts and manual error handling. Nix takes care of the operation end to end. With Nix env minus if for install file, Nix takes care of the list of packages and runs through them ensuring they're all present. It handles all the versioning, pass, linking and making sure everything's in place end to end. You can also add r running minus irf telling Nix to also replace any existing versions of the packages in the user profile with new ones. Some of you savvy users will start shouting now, mentioning things like flakes or .env or devenv and I promise we'll get there. A quick check shows RG is here along with FD, which is a better find replacement for your CLI. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to talk about modern Nix. Up until this point, we're kind of using Nix as a package manager replacement. If you're on a Mac like me, that's a great homebrew solution. Quicker, nicer, doesn't include 10,000 package updates with every CLI installation. The new way of doing things with Nix is using Nix flags. Flags are still considered experimental and need to be actively switched on if you want them. But they're a more modern way of installing Nix packages and make things slightly better. Some people claim they bring additional benefits like better pinning of dependencies, better file tracking, preventing unnecessary rebuilding of code, etc. etc. But we're not going there. You also won't believe how hated this topic is as things tend to get in tech communities on the internet. Let's see what it's all about. The first thing we want to do to enjoy Flakes and modern Nix is to allow these experimental features. Open etc slash nix nixconf or nix under dot config at home. Under nixconf we add nix command and Flakes as experimental features. We can now use nix with its subcommands like nix run. We'll echo a string into nix run pony say, for example. Let's scroll a little bit up so you can see the beautiful pony saying hello nix. Similarly, I can run a one-off netcat, and while it doesn't do much, it can be followed with arguments to test. Let's run a latest Vim release from Nix packages. Version 91377 is here, compared to the local one I currently run, which is 9.0 point something. The next important command is nix develop. This sets up a development environment with specified dependencies without installing them globally. Effectively, building a development environment that's easily destroyed later, reminding a lot of PyEnv or RubyEnv and the likes if you ever use those. I'll run a nix develop command with an example from the Terminate system 0 to nix guide. I'm greeted with a shell. You can see that CRL and git are fetched from a local nix cache store. The same, by the way, can also be run with a command like git help if you want a quicker access to the environment for a single operation. Right, with these under our tool belt, let's explore flakes. Nix flake init creates a new example of a flake. A flake is a tool that helps you manage Nix projects in a clear and consistent way. It specifies everything your project needs, making it easy to reproduce and more importantly, share. It has a description of the package, inputs such as a registry of packages to use, and outputs configuring the installation or build results, including the operating system, architecture, and so on. Let's try to run Nix develop on this flake and while it's running, I want to take a quick break and tell you about this video's sponsor. We talked about how flakes are especially great for sharing packages. Well, we'll do exactly that using a remote virtual server generously provided by Hostinger. Hostinger's KVM2 plan offers incredible value. Two CPU cores, four gigabyte RAM, and a hundred gigabytes of SSD storage, all at a super competitive price. For our requirements, this provides the best price quality ratio, ensuring top performance without breaking the bank. If we quickly compare this to AWS, for example, filtering a two vCPU core instance with four gigabytes, the minimum we get is a T instance, which, by the way, is holding a burstable CPU, meaning it has limited capacity for running at full speed. But regardless, this is going to cost around 24 bucks a month and that's the cheapest option not even calculating the 100 gigabyte nvme disk we're getting here use the link below or simply log in choose your plan and then add devops toolbox when checking out so you get an additional 10 percent off of any plan on top of the already great pricing if i try to run nix develop on this example flake i'd be greeted with an error telling me that it can't run on arch 64 darwin which is my mac os with the m3 chip it also isn't able to create a dev shell, which is what I asked for, using my operating system and a few other issues we'll fix in a bit. This is how modern Nix works. And if you'll go down the rabbit hole, you'll hear a lot about flakes. Okay, let's see how we can tweak a flake to run on any machine. 
I want mine to not only run on my local macOS, but also be able to provide a shell with the testing environment, so I'll include two bits here. First, the dev shell notation lists the packages I'd like, specifically Kause, NB and Fish, just so you can see there's nothing fishy going on. Sorry. With that, I can run Nix develop, use Kause high, then list my NB nodes, for example, even add one to show that it's persistent later if I recreate the environment, and even Fish Shell is here for my convenience. This illustrates perfectly how powerful Nix is. You can quickly create a dev environment with the tooling, applications, and even your favorite shell, all in a configuration file, ensuring the same reproducible result over and over. The other part of my flake is build env, which is more geared towards runtime environments. For example, I could use this flake as a configuration for my long-term remote system, and we'll do that with our remote host in just a bit. And this is where I'd configure that. For simplicity, I'll use the same packages, adding linked libraries, notably slash bin and slash lib, alongside extra outputs for man pages. Now I can run Nix build locally and later on Nix run. Now let's take this a step further and create a flake for an example application. We'll build a simple Golang app saying hello world, but this time I want it to build, compile and run both on my M3 chip Mac and the remote Linux VPS as if they were the same. The flake is rather simple. First, we describe a macOS input and output sections. Note the make derivation holding the build commands followed by installation instructions, which for a compiled language like Go is just creating a bin there and placing the compiled binary under the accessible path. We'll make sure the application runs locally and then build the flake with Nix build. Once ready, I should be able to call it directly with Nix shell providing the command hello, which should already be in the flakes path and sure enough, hello world is printed. Nix flake show tells us about a git based flake holding a default package for macOS Darwin architecture. Cool, time to make this thing available everywhere. But before that, let's just make sure our flake holds a dev shell section so that we can debug it using a development environment. After that, Nix show output both default package and dev shell for our flake. Nix develop creates the set shell. However, if I now try to run the hello app, you'll notice that it's not there. This is due to the fact that we access the shell without going through the actual build phase. This is still accessible to us from the flake and with the environment variable called build phase holding my go build command, I can evaluate the command after which hello is running from my global path. With Nix flake check, I can get a doctor like CLI option telling me if something's wrong and what should or must be fixed. Since there is nothing critical, let's clean the grid repo and add the flake log file and everything else so we can push it remotely to GitHub from which I should be able to install everywhere. I'll create a git repo, add the remote and push my flake. It's public, so you can get it on github.com at omerxx slash goflake for reference. Let's go back to my VPS config, grab the IP and SSH into the server. I should be able to call the flake from GitHub running Nix shell with GitHub notation followed by the flake's repo. The error tells me that it can see the flake, but this thing wasn't made for Linux or in a more professional language, it wasn't compiled for x86 platform or the Unix operating system. Let's fix that. We can add as many outputs for a flake as we want. In this case, after the default package, we'll add an x86 by 64 release using a different system, but doing the exact same process for building and installing the app. SSHing back to my VPS and updating the flake to fetch the push changes to GitHub, then running the flake again and sure enough, hello world to you too. And just to clarify, this VPS is a remote Linux server enjoying the same Golang app through a Nix flake that serves everyone. Let's touch Nix OS briefly. Five years ago, I migrated my server to NixOS. I had no idea what I was doing. I had never used Nix before. I thought I could figure it out. Five years later, I'm still running Nixos and I still have no idea how it works. Nix is an extremely complex system that is poorly documented. Should I use Nixos? Short answer, no. Long answer, no really, don't. Long, long answer, I'm not kidding, don't. Here's why not. Its learning curve is steep. You will trial and error your way to enlightenment if you survive long enough. Nixos is unlike any other Linux distro. Your issues will be unique and difficult to Google. The overhead of managing a Nixos config will rarely pay itself with fewer than three systems. Perhaps another distro with Nix on top would suit you better. Official documentation for Nixos is vast but shallow. 
unofficial resources and examples configs are sparse and tend to be either too simple or too complex or just outdated. This is made infinitely worse if you've never touched the shell or a functional language before, but you'll need to learn it to do even a fraction of what makes NixOS worth all the trouble. If you need somebody else to tell you whether or not you need NixOS, you don't need NixOS. As I mentioned earlier, this is just a shallow introduction. Nix goes deeper, and as you're probably starting to realize, it has a tendency of making things hard. Hard to Google, hard to get answers for, different approaches and systems for doing things. But don't be thrown off. We'll continue this journey together, so if you're curious, subscribe and hit the bell notification to be notified about new coming videos. Since Nixflex has a special relationship with Git repositories, here's a playlist with critical things to learn about Git as well as integrations that can make your daily workflow smooth and uninterrupted. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.